All right, so today is a big day because we are going to be installing our solar arch, stern rail, and davit structure that we've been working on for so long with Pacific Seacraft. They're gonna be on their way this way with that arch on a truck any minute now, and we're gonna start installing that bad boy. There's just so many different improvements wrapped up into this structure. This is awesome. We're gonna start doing measurements for the Bimin. Time to do one of my least favorite boatyard chores. And the ladder is actually frozen. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen snow on a boat. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm Desiree and this is my husband, Jordan. We're sailing around the world, or at least trying to. We made it as far as Panama on our first boat, Atticus 1, which was a really small fixer-upper. Now we're on our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, but she needs some work before she's ready to cross oceans. So we're working hard to finish up the last of our boat projects so we can sail south to the Caribbean. Man, look at this thing. <laughs> I cannot believe this is going on our boat. Beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Have you looked in a mirror lately? <laughs> nice one, buddy. Wow. Nice one. Right, Steve? <laughs> right? All right, so basically the dimensions of the solar arch had to be slightly different from the dimensions of the old stern rail, just to give it more support. The old base of the stern rail was right here. The new base is gonna be right here where the stern anchor road fair lead is. And so the block that that fair lead rests on needs to be removed now so that the new base can be mounted there. Now we are basically getting it in position and dry fitting it so that the bolts that we know are gonna match up are matching up and then that way we can mark where the new holes need to be. Well basically the bases are like super close to where they need to be which is in the middle of the cap rail so that the through bolts can be accessible in the hole of deck joint cavity but they're just a little off so we're just gonna use force to put the bases just where we want before they drill holes. Okay, so that's pretty much there. I think this is the most people we've ever had in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the bases are pretty much in position, it's getting a little late. So we're just gonna put a couple of fasteners into the cap rail just to hold it in place. Then tomorrow we'll come back, pull those fasteners and actually drill holes for three bolts. Just two bros hanging out. Having philosophical conversations about uh -huh arches. Look at how the curve matches the combing. What do you think if, if we tie a rope swing at the end of that tube? Oh. You think it's strong enough? Probably. No, <laughs> negatory. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yeah, you did an excellent yeah. job. Dude. Yeah, you're welcome. So Thanks, team. You're, fun, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so day two of the solar arch and stern rail install. So yesterday we were able to basically get the whole thing in place and just kind of hold it still with a handful of fasteners. And today we're gonna finish the installation by bolting this thing on and sealing all of those holes. But real quick, I wanna dive into exactly why we're going through so much trouble to install such a giant structure onto the boat. Now this structure is actually going to serve multiple functions for us. The first and foremost is we're going to be able to use it as a structure to mount solar panels. Now we, like just about everybody in the modern world, use a lot of electricity for just everyday stuff. Now all of that on top of the fact that we make weekly videos. We've got really powerful editing computers, we have to charge our camera batteries, so we use a lot of electricity and more so than the average cruiser. So we wanted to make sure that we could mount some gigantic solar panels on the boat in order to produce all the electricity that we need even when we're exploring some of the most remote and beautiful parts of the planet. But if we're gonna have two giant solar panels on the boat and have those panels be able to withstand storm force winds, we need to have the structure that supports those panels be super strong. 99. 
100. So the second function of the stern rail and arch is the fact that we want to have really solid dinghy davits. Basically, dinghy davits are structures that allow us to pull our dinghy up out of the water with minimal time and minimal effort. Now, there's a couple reasons why we'd want to pull the dinghy out of the water. First of all, we want to avoid having growth accumulate on the bottom of the dinghy, which really slows the dinghy down and it's hard to get rid of that growth. Also, we're concerned with corrosion on the outboard engine. So having the outboard submerged in salt water all the time is really bad for it. And also for theft, it's really handy to be able to get the outboard and dinghy up out of the water so that it would be a lot harder to steal it. And finally, it'd be great to not have to tow the dinghy behind the boat when we're going for short day sails or really brief offshore sails in calm conditions. But in order for those davits to be strong enough to be able to hold that relatively heavy dinghy up in place while we're off sailing again in relatively calm conditions, they need to be pretty darn strong and really well supported. Now Pacific Seacraft is still building those davits and so we will be mounting those to the solar arch here in the next week or so. Function number three three is shade. After living in the tropics for like six or seven years, we realized that shade is super, super important. Being out in the sun in the middle of the day in the tropics can be absolute torture. Not to mention that skin cancer can be a serious issue for people like us who are out in the sun day in and day out for years at a time. Now Atticus One, our previous boat, did have a shade solution. We called it our sunshade, but it took a long time to set up and it took a long time to break down, which was kind of a bummer because it meant that when we wanted to go off sailing for the day, it took a lot of time to get that boat ready to go off sailing. And so our goal with Atticus 2 was to make sure that we had complete shade protection in the cockpit. And the extended stern rail provides a platform for us to mount a very large bimini to. And basically a bimini is like a large shade solution on a boat. The fourth function is increased safety in the cockpit. Basically the extended stern rail is a whole lot safer than the conventional lifelines that are ran to keep you in the boat in the cockpit area. So all of that said, we are now going to bring the structure back down to the ground so that we can run all of the electrical wires as well as the antenna wires through the tubing. The other thing is that'll give the guys space up here on the rail to actually drill the holes that the wires will go through and prep all the areas where we're going to actually be you know, mounting the bases. So yeah, coming down to the last couple stages here. So Marvin and I have been down here brainstorming exactly where the different antennas are gonna end up. A lot of these tubes have the ability for wires to run through them, but certain wires, especially the bigger wires with the bigger terminal fittings at the end, they don't wanna do some of these sharp turns in close quarters. We've got a total of four antennas. We're gonna have a GPS antenna, a Wi-Fi booster, a cellular booster, and our Iridium Go sat phone antenna. So I think we've come up with a plan, so now we're gonna start drilling holes and running wires. Okay, so it's the end of the day. We got the lull machine coming. We didn't completely finish doing the wiring. Keep turning it. Nope. Nope. It broke like right here. Go ahead and put it on. We'll just do it all tomorrow on here. But we did enough so that we can safely do the rest on the boat. So we're gonna plop the thing on. All right, so basically we're just doing the same thing that we did last night. We're just getting it in place, putting a couple of bolts in just to hold it because it's getting a little late. And then tomorrow we're gonna come in and do the final install. All right, so we're getting the nuts onto the bolts, which is my specialty. When I was removing them, I just had to get a wrench on them. But now, like, actually getting my fingers with a little thing and actually getting it on is challenging with the amount of space that there is. <sighs> I think I just dropped that in a place where it's never coming back. Yes, yes. It's funny, it must look like I'm doing absolutely nothing. I'm like holding the nuts like this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like getting them into place and then like spinning them with the sides of my fingers. Can you push the top aft one in a little more? Perfect, I think that'll do it. Listen. 
sit on it. Ooh, this is awesome. Like the view is 10 times better. I think Oso likes it. <laughs> He's very tired from installing the arch. We got, got more to do, but we're getting there. Now we're not gonna install the solar panels until we're back in the water, just because putting the mast back on the boat and then putting the boat back into the water could potentially damage those panels. But next, I need to start doing the wiring for those solar panels. The first thing that I'm gonna start on is installing the charge controllers. Basically, charge controllers take the electricity that the solar panels are producing, which comes out at kind of a weird voltage and transforms that into a kind of electricity that can safely charge the batteries oh my gosh is this for you it's your birthday yeah i got you something what do you get <laughs> well this is a little bit kooky bud Oso technically owns land in scotland now which means he's a lord <laughs> okay so let me see this thing there's this really cool company called established titles and you can actually buy land in scotland and if you look here you can actually find his actual plot number how much land does he own <laughs> he owns one square foot of land in scotland okay <laughs> and the land that you buy is actually preserved so it goes into preserving the biodiversity and natural woodlands of scotland which i think is pretty cool and then also the proceeds that go to buying these certificates which you can buy online really quickly last minute birthday presents they go also towards planting trees all over the world and we love trees don't we yes we do oh so what do you think of being a lord huh technically bud he is now lord oso and uh -huh. as his subjects we must refer to him by his proper title so you want me to call him lord oso I want you to, and also, it is only right. It is very cool, but I'm not gonna call him Buddy, a Buddy, come on, look at him. I'm drawing a line at calling our dog Lord, I'm sorry. Could you at least take his lordship out for a walk, please? I will take Oso for a walk, no problem. Lord Oso, your subject is ready to escort you outside. <laughs> I love you. Always have. Your heart is free. Have the courage to follow it. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Lord Oso, am I right? Yeah, Lord Oso. In all seriousness, established titles is a really cool way to have a little bit of fun and also support the environment. And especially with Valentine's Day on the way, it makes a super good Valentine's Day gift. Even like a last minute gift, it takes like five minutes to become a Lord. It's not that expensive. And they're running a promotion before Valentine's Day. So if you sign up before Valentine's Day, you can go to establishedtitles.com slash Atticus and you'll get 10% off anything that you buy on the website. Super cool guys, you should really consider it, but we gotta go do some boat work. Yeah, let's get back to it. <laughs> yeah. My lord also. <laughs>here with Spencer and Brina from Inner Bank Sales and Canvas and they just came back with our renewed Dodger and Strataglass and we're gonna start doing measurements for the Bimini. All right so the Bimini that we're gonna be designing today is gonna be a little bit unique and have a few aspects that make it dramatically different from average Biminis. The first is that I'm very tall. I'm six foot four and that's just gonna be a taller Bimini than you're typically trying to design on a boat like this. The other thing though is that I want to have full headroom here aft of the Dodger. So I wanna be able to stand here and look forward. I wanna be able to move around comfortably and not hit my head on anything. Most Pacific Seacraft 40s and boats like this will have a Bimini coming to about right here. 
and then a connecting piece going down to the Dodger. And that works really well because without that connecting piece, or if you have Isinglass here, you can see the mainsail really well from a lot of the cockpit. The problem with that for me is with that connecting piece here, my head would touch it, my shoulders would touch it walking around in this space. We're gonna be doing a bimini that extends further forward than an average bimini so that my height handicap won't be a problem. Yeah. Nice belt, by the way. Yeah, it's like a Batman right. belt. Right. Yeah, nice. there you go. Dude, you're such a punk, man. Be professional. <laughs> be more professional. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting going through all of this hypothetically, right? Because every little detail is gonna result in the physical end result. And so it's good to kind of think through everything. Good morning, buddy. Oh. Good morning. So why are you sleeping out here in the salon? <laughs> well, it took me a couple days to figure it out. The boat is tilted up, so when I lay in the V-berth, my feet are above my head. I figured I'd come out here and at least I could put my head facing forward. And also I could sleep with the baby. Come on, buddy. Wake up, show her how it's done. Man, so it is cold outside, but it is nice and warm in the boat. That's because we've got our Espar uh, diesel heater just pumping out tons of hot air. It still just blows me away that we've got a lot of hot water. We've got a five gallon hot water tank, and so that's more than enough hot water to do the dishes, for both of us to shower. Maybe not do all three of those things, but either both shower or do the dishes. We're getting a little spoiled, I'd say. At the boatyard, I guess, here they only have well water coming through the pipes. We decided just to get drinking water from the grocery store. So we filled one of our tanks with the well water from the boatyard just because we want to make sure we give it a good clean when we leave. So we use that water to do dishes and showering. We just got to be careful we're not like making a huge mess down here. Definitely no going to the bathroom here in the boatyard. All right, so it is a particularly freezing morning today. All the North Carolinians are in a huff because it's gonna be a high of 32 today. And because of that, there's a ton of frost on deck and ice, and the ladder is actually frozen. <laughs> yeah, so getting down here and holding Oso at the same time was kinda nuts. Anyways, it is time to do Oso's favorite thing, which is explore the boatyard and try not to freeze our butts off. <laughs> so I always love walking through boatyards because I feel like each boat tells a different story of someone's dream and what they wanted to accomplish and sometimes these boats are in immaculate condition and you can see they're like ready to splash and I get so excited for the owners and then these other boats you see them kind of neglected and like in a swamp <laughs> and you kind of wonder like you know what happened to that boat but on the other hand you think like wow I wonder where that boat has been they've got stories to tell also loves the boatyard for a completely different reason for him. It's like this Disneyland of all these things to check out. There's all these little like hidden tunnels because people have like tents set up or broken down cars or stairwells or scaffolding. And he's just like in freaking dog heaven here. Catch. Good job. You coming, Kevin? I think it's about time to go home. I can't feel my fingertips or my toes. Let's get back in the warm boat. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this feels so good. We've been to our fair share of boatyards all around the world, and I gotta say, a nice shower at a boatyard is really hard to come by. So the fact that I'm just in Atticus in my little, like, luxurious bubble is pretty spectacular right now. <sighs> the only kind of downside about having a shower on a boat with a lot of wood is that we build up a lot of moisture in here. So I just make sure I squeegee all the water off the walls. And then when I'm done, I always open all the windows, which when it's cold outside, this is the crappiest step of the showering process. Oh, 
actually. All right, time to do one of my least favorite boatyard chores. So the boatyard doesn't have a way for us to empty out our holding tank. Basically, every time we go to the bathroom, all of our stuff goes into a tank, and we don't want to fill that tank up and have it be like nastily sitting in the boat with us. What we've been doing is doing our number ones in a bucket, which is currently full right now. This is super gross. I do not want to spill any of this. <laughs> Keeping the deck clean is so hard in a boat yard because my tennis shoes just track so much dirt. Don't worry, I'm gonna take the pee. You just sit tight. Yes, didn't spill any pee. getting ready to throw some clothes into the laundry. We're so happy that McCotters has a laundry facility because not a lot of boat yards you come by have a place to do your laundry. So I'm gonna go toss these clothes in. Well, it might not look like much, but when you're living full-time on a boat, washing machines are Well, tomorrow is supposed to be rainy, cold, snowing. So I went to the grocery store and just stocked up on a bunch of stuff. Little buddy's happy because yeah. he gets to destroy some of the packaging. It's a really good excuse to hibernate. We've been working our little butts off, so I'm actually very excited to just close the companionway, crank the heat, cook some cookies. Whoa. We'll just go with it. We're gonna have a couple of gin drinks. So we've got our two bottles of Thousand Piers gin. They're getting pretty low actually because we've been really enjoying them. If we're gonna have the epic snowstorm of the century tomorrow, I need to have my liquid courage. <coughs> Snipped in a bunch of effervescence. I think it's the ginger. Is Take the camera. I can't do Take it. Take the camera. I do get why you're coughing because it's there's a lot of ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Who's making fun of me now? All right, so we had the blizzard last night, and <laughs> check this out. <laughs> Look at that. Holy moly. This is the first time I've ever seen snow on a boat. <laughs> this is crazy. Let's go see snow for the first time. I think he might be a little confused. <laughs> it's funny how every time we put clothes on him like this, he like gets depressed like that, you know? Like, he just stops moving. <laughs> this is just like Christmas story. Come on, Mom, we're gonna be late! Snow noobs over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's very confused. Hey, Oso. Oh. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Sorry, buddy. His hair is not meant for the snow. No. <laughs> Dang, buddy. That is going to be dangerous. I think he likes it. Yeah. <laughs> What? That wasn't me. Look at his little feet, buddy. They're just like caked in snow. <laughs> Poor little dude's getting cold, You're have man. To be frosty, little guy. I'm warming his paws with my mouth. <laughs> uh -huh. This is love. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's episode. I wanted to let you know about a really cool documentary that just came out called The Real Deal. And it's a tribute to an incredible sailor and shipbuilder, Larry Party. And now he and his wife, Lynn, wrote a ton of books about their adventures building various boats from scratch and taking those boats all the way around the world on a super tight budget. And so those stories have been super inspirational to me and Jordan from the very beginning of our own journey. And I can remember many times in the 
salt yard on Atticus 1 and kind of losing motivation and opening up one of Lynn's stories and really getting inspired again to just not give up and keep going. So what's really cool about The Real Deal is that it has a ton of never before seen footage about their actual adventures that Lynn portrays in a lot of their books as they're sailing around the world. So I'll put a link to that documentary in the description below and we're going to be giving away two free copies of The Real Deal to two of our lucky patrons. So if you're a patron, definitely check out our patron-only Facebook group or patron page today for more details about that giveaway. Also, we are currently at McCotter's Boatyard in Washington, North Carolina, and we just heard from the manager here that they've received a huge shipment of a ton of high field dinghies. And we know from our personal experience over the last couple of months that it's been incredibly difficult to get our hands on a dinghy. So if you're in the same boat, so to speak, and you're local to North Carolina, definitely give them a call. And finally, we are getting super excited to finally cast the lines and continue on our journey south to warmer waters. We've been really enjoying getting to know Washington and from learning how to make genuine East Carolinian barbecue to learning how to distill gin from scratch, we've had a ton of fun filming a lot of these really unique experiences and we'd love to continue filming experiences like this as we head down south. So if you know of a really cool activity or experience that you'd love to see us make a video about, particularly the areas around Beaufort, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, or any of the east coast of Florida, please shoot us an email to atticusdestinations at gmail.com and we're really excited to hear about your ideas. All right, that about wraps it up. Hope you guys have an incredible weekend and we will see you next week.